to uh, okay and introduce the first speaker, um, Nora Turot, uh, who needs very little introduction. Uh, Nora is internationally renowned for her work in viral hepatitis, uh, and she recently. Uh, wrote the ASLD guidelines for hepatitis B. I'm sure that many of you are aware of. Uh, she's the director of the Viral Hepatitis Center, UCSF, and really a great mentor for a you know, record number of trainees and junior faculty. And uh, when we asked uh, her to launch this project, not only was she able to launch this successfully, she took it to a new level and get external funding. So she's really done a tremendous job, of course, with. Uh, great help from a lot of people. And I realize that this is also her, part of her vision to eradicate hepatitis C, starting in California, maybe the world at some point. Canada after that. Canada, okay. <laughs> so without further ado, Nora, thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming and um, I'm just gonna go back to this front slide um, to first acknowledge sort of the, to highlight the ECHO team. I'm really speaking here on behalf of really uh, an, an amazing group of individuals, all of which are very passionate about ECHO and really have contributed to the success of our first year. This started out as just this idea of something that we felt would be important to provide to our community. Um, and now it's really grown in my mind to something that really um, does have um, certainly a perspective within the state uh, and, and even beyond that to globally. And it sort of fits in very, very well with um, new initiatives really directed towards HCV elimination on a global scale. So just to remind you, uh, a year ago exactly, I, I was bringing to you the launch of our UCSF Project ECHO. Uh, based on the universe, oh, it's on some kind of auto thing. Interesting. Okay, well, I'll speak a little faster then. No, just kidding. Um, so, so this idea that you have a, a, a group of experts or specialists, the Echo Hub, that link virtually with the Echo Spokes, which are primary care physicians, and they in turn are really out there to treat the patients that really can't make it to UCSF for their care, where the burden is really very high for them to have to come to a academic center for care. So this idea of a hub with spokes um, and really this idea of really multiplying your ability to get to patients is really what's behind ECHO. And um, we're very, very pleased that in our first year we have established uh, 52 spokes. <laughs> uh, they represent 20 California counties. We've been very focused on Northern California. I'm gonna have to keep doing that. Um, Northern California, um, as you can see. Uh, but we have a site as uh, far south as uh, Los Angeles and as far north, north as, Red, as Red Bluff. Um, and we're eager to have more. Um, we have, over the course of the year, um, started out with doing our bi-weekly didactic clinic, where we do a video con conference, um, provide a didactic le le lecture. Okay, give me two seconds here to just turn that off. Slideshow. How do I turn off the timer? This thing? Anybody? Oh, hang on. Sorry. It's just that it's going to, like, drive me a little crazy. Use timings, let's do that. Okay, great, I think that'll be what I need. So, so just to highlight, what we do in our ECHO clinic is we have a virtual conference every two weeks. It starts out with a didactic lecture for which we offer CME. And then the cases um, are pre presented to us by the spokes and then we use that as a, a mechanism to educate and to do case-based learning. Um, over the course of the year, we added something at the end of clinic called the mailbag, and this represented really questions that came in between clinics about kind of how to manage patient care, and we use that as yet another opportunity to do uh, teaching. Um, and over the course of the year, we also expanded what we offered our spokes. Uh, we added what we called HCV 101, was, which was a, a quarterly um, offering of an in-person immersion where they would come to UCSF for a day to spend with the team. And we use that as often a way to in initiate the primary care physicians or providers into um, HCV treatment. 
And then we also more recently added the HCV Voice, which is a warm line where they have access to the HCV providers 24-7 for really uh, urgent questions uh, that need to be addressed between the clinics. So we now feel like we have kind of complete wraparound care for our, our spokes in terms of their ability to care for patients with hepatitis C. And just to give you a sense of the, you know, every two weeks we're delivering a didactic. It's done by largely the ECHO team, but I also call on my UCSF hepatology colleagues and surgical colleagues to, to assist with some of those lectures. And we've moved from hep C, but also into other areas of liver disease. I really anticipate that at the end of, of really this training, this learning experience, that they're not only going to be good at treating hep C, but they will be better at managing uh, hepatology or liver patients. Um, so I think the, the benefit of this is that we're also getting greater expertise in the communities on managing patients with liver disease. To give you a sense of HCV voice, um, you know, they, they can text or call us with questions. Um, they actually, at first, uh, first person they reach is really one of the uh, nurse practitioners of PAs. We have, I've been really fortunate to have four individuals who are very, very motivated to really be right available to our, our primary care providers. But just to give you a sense of the kind of questions, this is just between one clinic, the kinds of questions that come in. They're very simple sometimes from like, what do I do if the viral load's still positive at week four, to I have a patient who's pregnant and has HCV, what should I do about transmission to the baby, to the gamut of like, I have a patient who's decompensating uh, health. Um, a very important component of the ECHO team is our pharmacist. Um, every ECHO uh, clinic, we have the pharmacist present. As you know, access to the HCV drugs is probably one of the biggest challenges. But it's not just that. I mean, we're helping them to really get a very efficient way of getting patients' uh, medications approved, but they're also really invaluable in terms of dealing with drug-drug interactions, and also in particular for patients that have more complex medication regimens. We um, have evaluated our success in actually getting the providers to have more confidence and knowledge. And this was a survey that was done both at the beginning of us, our ECHO program and then at a follow-up after the individuals had done at least five clinics. And you can see on a scale to one to five, some of them start out very confident about certain aspects but have actually all shown improvements over a relatively short period of time in terms of their ability to screen, to be able to manage patients during treatment, um, manage side effects, to be educators, um, and to assess severity of liver disease. And even when we move on to more complex patients, such as managing HCV in pregnancy, um, or managing individuals who fail a first-line DAA option, um, many of those are now acquiring the skill set to be able to do that as well. So in all of the um, uh, aspects that we evaluated, uh, we saw that the providers actually had improved in terms of their uh, confidence and their knowledge. And we also did a focus group to evaluate really how we could improve upon ECHO. And I, I pulled just two quotes, and I like these, you know, the most. They're, they're my favorites, so I like to share them. But it really is, I think, in, sort of gives you a sense of really what we're trying to do and who we are uh, connected with. We're really targeting rural um, and suburban uh, physicians. So here are two quotes. I practice in rural Northern California, and we would have to refer our patients with HCV out 100, sometimes 200 miles to be seen. Availability was very limited, and patients were having problems with transportation, so they were falling through the cracks. Somebody told me about this program, and it's been phenomenal. Yes. Um, I'm so happy to have a professional support finally behind me. For so long, being way out here in nowhere and not being able to have someone who you can call or contact or have education right at hand when handling these complex patients has been so awful. I'm just so relieved and glad to have Project Active that I, that I hope it never goes away. We had really a very positive response from our focus group. It helped us also to sort of enrich and think about how we're going to improve it going forward. So how are we going to move it forward? That's the end of year one. Now we're really looking to how can ECHO do more? And um, how it can do more is really in two aspects. One is um, we've started out with ECHO as a mechanism to treat hepatitis C, really to really bring greater expertise on managing hepatitis C to the primary care or specialist office. Um, but now I think we're also looking to echo to manage other complex c conditions. And uh, very recently, just uh, in the last few weeks, I also got another uh, grant to be able to develop what we've called Echo Plus. And this is really fundamentally a grant for the next three years to work towards the goal of HCV elimination in northern central California. So let me just share a few of those thoughts with you. So one of the things that we've already had some preliminary discussions about, just to give you a sense of how echo can be used for other things, 
This is, um, we're contemplating doing echo for end-stage renal disease and kidney transplant. So the idea here is that the UCSF hub would include a transplant nephrologist, um, we'd have some um, allied health professionals uh, as well, pharmacist, transplant surgeon as part of that echo hub, and we would link with community nephrologists, internists, dialysis nurses, and other providers that are taking care of patients with these complex renal uh, diseases. And looking to the future, we, we are, we're not certain about this as yet, but certainly this has also been on the discussion, is this idea of having an echo for liver cancer and liver masses, a sort of virtual tumor board. Here with uh, radi radio radiologists, interventional radiologists, surgeons, hepatologists, oncologists, all really available to review cases. And again, having this kind of idea of a hub with spokes um, dialing in to get this expert um, advice in terms of helping to manage patients. So those are some of the things we're looking forward to in terms of expanding echo beyond hepatitis C. And then in terms of the hepatitis C echo, um, you all are aware or may not be, but the WHO put out a hep viral hepatitis elimination plan where the goal is to try to eliminate uh, hepatitis B and C by 2030. It's an ambitious, ambitious goal. Uh, by elimination, the elimination, what's meant is that you reduce uh, the incidence of infection to zero. Um, in the U.S., we have 5.1 million individuals who are estimated to be infected, and one out of every six of those infected individuals live in California. So we have an incredible disease burden here in California State. And some staggering numbers, really, in terms of where we're at in dealing with the hepatitis C uh, problem. Um, of the more than uh, nearly 8 million Californians, it's estimated that only 10% of the baby boomers have been tested, and that's a, a solid recommendation that all should be tested. 14 out of the 15 counties with the highest rates of newly reported HCV cases are in Northern California. And 33 out of 35 counties in Northern and Central California have reported rates of HCV infection that are above state averages. So we have a, a lot of chronic disease and we also are one of the states that is quite hard hit by newly, uh, new cases of hepatitis C. So really with that, uh, oh sorry, with that in mind, um, uh, we're looking to really expand ECHO to try to meet the gaps in care to see more Californians that are going to be um, diagnosed and treated. And we recognize that the diagnosis is where the biggest gap is, and that really is the front line where primary care physicians are really have to do the lion's share of the work. Um, and so we are really looking at ways that we can amplify diagnosis. But even when individuals are diagnosed, there's still a fall off in terms of the cascade of care. Those that are, are diagnosed often don't get appropriate testing to confirm their viremic, don't have access to an HCV provider, and even when they meet the provider, have difficulty getting access to care. So our agenda with the ECHO Plus is to really, is to really work on each aspect of that cascade. So ECHO Plus, this is the plan for the next three years. Um, we still are going to have our hub that's going to remain active, and we're looking to recruit an additional 120 physicians over the next three years. We also have partnered with UCD, and we'll be offering, in conjunction at UCSF and UCD, telemedicine consoles as an additional uh, support for our hubs. But really, again, that idea of wraparound care for our physicians so that really they have the ability to have um, access to specialists. And we've had in recent uh, months um, both ID and gastroenterologists join in the ECHO uh, program, and we look to sort of really amplify the treaters in that community as well, and, and we'll have ECHO available to them should they need it. But in addition to that, we need more individuals doing diagnosis. So that means we need to have more PCPs that are engaged in doing HCV care. And for that, we have actually, within the context of this next grant, have a sort of boots on the ground individual who's literally going to be in her Airstream trailer going around North California, identifying primary care physicians who are going to become part of our network. And we've also looked at ways that we can really improve the efficiency of care by um, developing patient educational videos, developing patient trackers, and actually providing more point on point uh, pharmacy expertise. And we believe that all of this sort of amplified uh, level of engagement will lead to more individuals being diagnosed and treated. So to summarize, really echo at the end of year one and looking to years two, three, four, five, it's still a major issue. HCV, while you may hear about the fact that it's going to disappear in the next decade, that's probably true, but we want to try to identify individuals before they're facing the morbidity and mortality of their disease. HCV elimination is absolutely within reach, 
We have 15 years to try to get to that zero uh, point in terms of new infections. And ECHO represents a very unique and important model for us to amplify the number of individuals who can deliver that care. And ECHO Plus, which we're launching in January of 2017, is really set out to very specifically address this, the gaps in care here in Northern California and in Central California. Thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs> yeah, we have to repeat the questions for this. So can I ask the first question? So um, can you mention about the criteria and also the mechanism for joining uh, this, the, one of the spokes? Oh, sure. You can just call me. <laughs> no, we, we have actually uh, an echo uh, email. It was on the very last slide that I showed you. So you can reach out to me. You can reach out to any member of the team. Uh, but we actually have a, a UCSF ECHO website as well, so you go to the website and you can sign on. Really, our criteria are only that you want to um, be engaged in HCV care. Um, I'll tell you, of the 52 spokes that we have, I would say 30 of them are very frequent, like they're at every clinic, they're very consistent participants. And then we have a handful that came to the in-person, uh, some that only come to us with the tough cases, some of us that, some of them that predominantly use HCV voice. We're fine with all of that. Our agenda here is really to provide really a resource to the community. Um, and so whatever works to really support individuals to do HCV care, we're happy to provide that. Okay, Tony. Sorry. That's okay, no. Astonishing enterprise. Mm -hmm. Repeat the question. So the question is funding. So I have uh, written grants. So this is completely funded via grants. But to be honest, you know, UCSF has also, you know, pitched in in terms of wanting to get this up and running and to support it. I couldn't have done it actually without really UCSF Medical Center wanting this to uh, happen and to succeed. But you always wonder what's going to happen when the grants aren't there. And I think there's sort of, there is movement afoot to actually making, there's some legislation moving through Congress actually to try to look at having this being a fund, uh, something that could be, um, you could be reimbursed for. So many of us are looking to the future where that might be the case. I think linking in telemedicine consults as part of your enterprise is another way to support your ECHO program. Um, and then I think the other aspect is really to look, some other ECHO programs across the United States have, have been able to show that their ECHO program is beneficial due to the downstream kind of effects. Like we're providing care uh, really in people's I medical home. We don't want them to actually come to UCSF, which seems a little counterintuitive, but true. But, but when, they, when they need us, we're here. And when they need us is when they have the more complex complications. And so I think it's a model that works very well. We're really having care that should be delivered in the patient's medical home done there. And when they need the specialist care of UC Medical Center, we're there for them as well. Great. Thank you very much. That's terrific.